I grew up on Disney films, and I got into anime at a very early age, back in the old Toonami days. And aside from style, I wasn't really sure what the difference was between Western and Eastern animation. But having grown up in the Disney Renaissance, and having a bunch of anime series under my belt now, I'm starting to get the picture. If you had to describe to a friend the biggest difference between Western and Eastern animation, besides the style, how would you do so? I believe there is one big difference between Eastern and Western animation, and that is how they convey emotion. Western animation tends to put the character as the focal point of the emotional drama, while Eastern animation uses the circumstances that the characters find themselves in as what stirs the emotions of the audience. Now it should be noted that these methods are not exclusive to each style of animation. Both Eastern and Western can use characters and circumstances to produce an emotional response in the audience. It's just that the main emotional drivers tend to be character for Western animation and circumstance for Eastern animation. There are two similar scenes that will help me illustrate this point. One is from a silent voice, and the other is from the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Before we begin breaking this down, let's talk about why this is important. Conveying emotion with circumstances allows the viewer to more easily place themselves into the situation that the protagonist might find themselves in. And this elicits a reaction of empathy. We can relate to the struggle of those challenges. Conveying emotion through character can create a powerful bond that resonates with audiences. This typically manifests itself in the heroic figure. The characters of Western animation are almost always the hero, and usually express a paragon of moral excellency. Creating memorable characters also lends itself to uh, increasing merchandise sales, but that's beside the point. You are wearing his merchandise! Let's analyze two rescue scenes, one from the east and one from the west. The first scene we're going to look at is a scene from the movie A Silent Voice. If you haven't seen this movie yet, you need to stop this video and go find it and watch it because it's amazing. While attending a festival, Shoko's sister and mom leave to go get food, and Shoko leaves the festival to go back to her apartment giving some lame excuse. When they come back, the sister asks Shoya to run back to the apartment to get her camera that she left there. It's never explicitly stated, but I kind of felt like this was always deliberate on the sister's part because she wanted Shoya and Shoko to have some time together. There's a lot to unpack in this one scene. Upon entering the apartment, he sees Shoko step onto the railing of the balcony and realizes what she's about to do because earlier in the film, we see him attempt to do the same thing. He calls out to her several times, but she's deaf and has removed her hearing aid because we see it in the frame where he grabs the camera. He starts to call to her and out of habit begins to take off his shoes in the customary practice before he realizes how serious the situation is. She can't hear Shoya calling out, and as he runs to stop her, he clips the table and falls to the ground. Panicking, he screams out her name and dashes to save her. Now, I'm not going to spoil what happens because you need to go watch this movie if you haven't done so already. But it's within this scene that these circumstances are what is driving the tension. Shoko can't hear him, and Shoya struggles to get to her in time. Next, let's take a look at The Hunchback of Notre Dame. This movie's climactic scene is another rescue. Esmeralda is about to be burned at the stake, and Quasimodo has been chained to the Notre Dame Cathedral, forced to watch. His master, Judge Dom Claude Frollo, has spent the entire movie convincing Quasimodo that the outside world is cruel and hateful, especially to people like him. Esmeralda is the first person to treat Quasimodo with kindness and respect, not caring for what he looks like, and she is about to be killed. And maybe Frollo's wrong about the both of us. What does he say? Frollo's nose is long and he wears a truss. <laughs> the chains that hold Quasimodo aren't literal, they're metaphorical and the gargoyle Laverne says so. These chains aren't what's holding you back, Quasimodo. Leave me alone. Once Quasimodo can overcome the fear and lies that his master Frollo has built up around him for the entirety of his life, he's able to make the daring journey and rescue his friend. It is only by overcoming his inner turmoil that Quasimodo is able to break the very thing that holds him back so he can move forward. For the entirety of the movie, the audience roots for Quasimodo to break free from the hold that his master has over him. 
and to finally see it gives the audience a surge of emotional satisfaction. This crying out for refuge, victory, and sanctuary is as much for Quasimodo as it is for Esmeralda. If you need any more convincing that character is the driving force of the audience's emotional response, look at Quasimodo's reaction to when Phoebus kisses Esmeralda. I mean, come on. If that's not proof, I don't know what is. So in my humble opinion, that's the biggest difference that I've noticed between Eastern and Western animation. It's how they convey emotion to the audience, whether through circumstance or through character. But now it's your turn. Do you have a preference of Eastern or Western animation? Which method do you think is more powerful in creating emotion? Circumstance or character? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, Storytellers. If you want to see more videos like this one, hit subscribe, ring the bell, and turn on notifications. I'm Drew Malou, and I'll see you in the next video.